Hello church, thank you for joining me today. We're in this series, The God I Love, and, and we're looking at God's attributes, His characteristics, uh, how God is made, what God is made of, and, and how He interacts with us. Today we're gonna to be looking at God's faithfulness. Now faithful is an accurate description of who God is. He is trustworthy, reliable, dependable, if we would really sit down and think about it, we would marvel at God's faithfulness to us. It's not something we deserve. Now His truthfulness, holiness, love, righteousness, and all the other attributes ensure His faithfulness. He is incapable of being otherwise. He can't be unfaithful. Let's look at God's faithfulness to the nation of Israel when they were taken away into captivity by Babylon and see how that will help us today. Jeremiah 29 verses 4 through 14. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce marry and have children then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren multiply do not dwindle away and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where i sent you into exile pray to the lord for it for its welfare will determine your welfare this is what the lord of heaven's armies the god of israel says do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised. I will bring you home again. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. Now, Jeremiah was writing to the Jews that were taken uh, captive and really off into exile by Babylon. God warned them this would happen if they continued following foreign gods and worshiping idols. Now, the people that got there, some might have felt that this there was no hope left. Others listened to the false prophets like Hananiah, who prophesied that this would be over in two years. Don't worry, two years, we're going to be gone. Although they were unfaithful, God stayed faithful to his word and promises. We could apply this to our lives today. Many go through difficulties that challenge their faith. Sometimes it's because of their own choices that got them into this mess. God will allow you to follow the desires of your heart for the reason to see what destructive forces are behind those desires. Our hearts are desperately wicked. Or sometimes like Daniel and, and his three friends, you find yourself in a challenging situation even though you were faithful to God. God is faithful. We should hold on to his promises. The plans he has for us are to prosper and not to harm. Plans to give us hope and future. We need to hold on to God's word. In times of trouble and uncertainty, there are many voices with many opinions. Back then, there were false prophets who, who were confessing and really confessing that, hey, two years done, confusing the people. This is so relevant for today. So many voices stir up confusion. Jeremiah was bringing the true word of God to cut through the lies and bring direction and hope for God's people. Now, they had to hold on to this word, and we need to hold on to the word. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, For I am confident of this very thing, 
that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. We need to regularly be reminded of who God is and what truth he is speaking over our lives, especially when we go through times of trouble and uncertainty. Who could say amen to that about the next couple of months about being uncertain? He is the God of heaven and earth. When he speaks, it will be done. He watches over his promises. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. Even though many times the nation of Israel were unfaithful, God remains faithful. And he is watching over them. And, and, and he's watching over them so that he could uh, fulfill his purpose and his plan for them. Now, the same is true for us. Even when we miss the mark, as we mess up, right, go the opposite direction, God is saying, I am your God. Even when we're afraid, God is saying, I am your God. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. You are mine. Isaiah 49 verses 15 and 16. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. When trouble comes, we need to keep on living with hope. God knew it was best for the nation of Israel to be in exile for those 70 years. Because if they were to go back to their old, comfortable lives, they would once again fall into their old, destructive habits, worshiping false gods. God had a different, better future planned for them. Now, maybe you find yourself in a situation where you didn't think you would ever be, or I don't even want to be in this situation. God is calling us to live and be fruitful where we are. Pray for where you're planted. You are there as a light in darkness. God could use you as an agent of change where you are. God has many promises and he is faithful. We need to anchor our souls in the truth of those promises so that we could stand in the middle of the storm. One way of anchoring ourselves and, 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 and standing in the storm is to rest in God's perfect timing. God didn't exile his people to discourage them. In fact, he was using this to refocus them and make them stronger for the future. God was restoring a hunger for him, his purposes, who they were as a nation and their covenant with God. It's important for us to recognize that whatever season you are in, God has set a time for it to start and also to end. Psalm 30 verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. This gives us hope to hold on to. God will fulfill his word. God will fulfill his promises. This not only gave hope to the nation of Israel, but in their history, it became proof that God was who he said he was, because it came to pass exactly as he said it would. Seventy years, you go back. We need to hold on to the faithful God, because God will restore. Look at Jeremiah 29.10. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. God promised to restore them, and he did. What they went back to was, was different, but, but it was good. It was different because what they had before was not healthy at all. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Now that was God's heart for the nation of Israel. It's also God's heart for us. 
He wants a beautiful future for us and to have us grounded in hope. This promise of hope speaks of Jesus. Our future and hope comes through him. In Jesus and only in Jesus do we find life and life in abundance. In Jesus we have a secure future and an eternal hope. We have the privilege now to look back at these events in history, to look at the nation of Israel, to see how God dealt with them. We see that God did perform exactly what he had promised. After 70 years, they did return to Jerusalem. They did rebuild, but even more, they were restored in a relationship with God. And that happened in the time of Nehemiah. They once again found the scroll of God's word. They once again repented and returned to the faithful God. Seek God with all our heart. Your relationship deepens as you journey with a faithful God. Jeremiah 29 verses 12 and 13. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. This was a word of hope, urging Israel to surrender to God's timing and God's purpose, trusting in his faithfulness. Surrendering is key to the relationship with God, knowing that he is faithful and wants the best for us. We can rest in his timing, not stop living, but continue living, focused on his guidance his purpose for me with our lives built on his faithfulness.